EA Games. Harry Potter's first year at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry was very eventful indeed. Along with his friends, Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger, Harry had managed to defeat Lord Voldemort, the greatest dark sorcerer of all time. But now Harry was back at number four Privet Drive. He was often locked in his room, and even though he was a wizard, he couldn't escape because he wasn't allowed to use magic. Then, one evening towards the end of the summer holidays, a house elf named Dobby appeared. Dobby warned Harry not to return to Hogwarts. Harry Potter must not go back to Hogwarts. If Harry Potter goes back, he will be in mortal danger. There is a plot, Harry Potter, a plot to make most terrible things happen. Dobby disappeared. And shortly after, Ron Weasley and his brothers, Fred and George, arrived in a flying Ford Anglia to rescue Harry from his prison. Harry told them all about Dobby's warning. Very fishy. I reckon old Dobby was sent to someone's idea of a joke. Can you think of anyone at school with a grudge against you? Draco Malfoy. Eventually, they landed at Ron's house, the burrow. Touchdown! Ron's mother, Molly Weasley, marched across the yard and came to a halt in front of them. She didn't look pleased. Bed's empty, no note, car gone. Out of my mind with worry. It seemed to go on for hours, and Mrs. Weasley had shouted herself hoarse before she turned to Harry. Very pleased to see you, Harry, dear. Ronald Weasley, I thought I asked you to stop that ghoul from making such a racket. He's still dropping pipes over the attic floor. It's driving me mad. Come on, Harry, let's go. And they did. Welcome to my home. It's not much. I think it's brilliant. Thanks, Harry. We call it the burrow. Come on, Harry. If the girl has locked the attic door again, we've got to try and find another way in. I see Dad has placed some crates in the garden. Why don't we use them to climb up onto the roof and then into the open attic window? Seeing you've been stuck at the Dursleys for so long, you can practice your knockback jinx on the crates. Remember, you need to press the X button to cast. Try and flipendo these crates with your knockback jinx. Remember, press the X button to cast. Ronald Weasley, I thought I asked you to stop that ghoul from making such a racket. He's still dropping pipes over the attic floor. It's driving me mad. Oh dear, Mum's really not happy and I think we should avoid her. But let's climb up onto the roof and jump in through the attic window. Watch me and then follow. To climb onto a crate, walk up to it and use the up directional button. <sighs> Okay, your turn, Harry. Push into the small crate to climb on top, and then run over the gap to auto jump.
Right, we need to calm down the ghoul. He's banging and dropping pipes and it's driving mum mad. Use your directional buttons to move the chest. Try and catch 60 pipes before they land on the floor and make a terrible racket. Right, Harry, let's get to it. shut him up for a while. Thanks for helping with the ghoul. Ah, oh, that's much quieter. Now I need you boys to denome the garden for me. Go find Mr. Weasley. He's by the shed messing about with non-magical junk. <sighs> right, let's go find Dad. leaves his junk everywhere. It drives Mum mad. Try smashing these barrels with a fully charged knockback jinx so we can get through the gate. over by the Puffs game patch. Why don't you go and chat to her? She's been a bit shy lately. I wonder why. I'm off to see what Dad's up to. Hello, Harry. Pleased to meet you, I'm Ginny. I'm just looking after a puff game. Making sure that Fred and George don't use it as a bludger when they play Quidditch. Guide the puff game over to the bushes and it'll eat them, revealing every flavour beans that you can collect. Beans can be used to buy famous witches and wizards cards from Fred and George at Hogwarts. If you guide the puff game over to the bushes, it'll eat them, and you may be able to find a famous witches and wizards card. Whenever you get a wizard card, it is put into your Folio Magi. Press the select button. This will show you the Folio Magi and the wizard cards you've collected at that point. There are two types of famous witches and wizards cards. The silver cards and the four special gold founder cards. Well done, Harry! 
Here's a fake Witches and Wizards card. Felix Summerby. Best find Ron, Harry. He's gone off to see Dad, I think. It's this way. Harry, I'm Arthur Weasley. I was wondering if you'd help me denome the garden. It's just through the gate, but you'll need the denoming gloves to grab the gnomes. Unfortunately, I seem to have lost them under all this junk. Use your Wingardium Leviosa spell to charm and move the junk. Holding the X button levitates each piece of junk. Use your directional buttons to move the junk about and press the triangle button to drop it onto the rocks and break the junk up. Could you charm them and drop them onto the rocks, please? Maybe we can find those gloves. I know I left them round here somewhere. Wingardium Leviosa! That's right, Harry. Keep going. Wingardium Leviosa! That's right, Harry. Keep going. Wingardium Leviosa! Well done, Harry. Nice work. You found the denoming gloves. Here they are. Thanks for helping Dad out, Harry. You've also learned how to charm objects. I'm sure that will come in very handy. The sooner we deny him the garden, the sooner we can get some sleep. I'm exhausted. Time to put these denoming gloves to good use. Mum wants us to throw these gnomes over the fence and into that field of that's no magical junk. To fling a gnome, you're going to need a good run up. Hit the square button as quick as you can to build up speed. Once you reach the fence, you begin spinning on the spot. Press the triangle button when you're ready to throw the gnome. You get points for distance and for hitting the target. <laughs> Press the triangle button to throw.
<laughs> Excellent, Harry. That's your all-time highest score. That was really good fun. Do you want to play again? Hello there. Fancy a wizard duel? A wizard duel? Don't tell me you've never taken part in a wizard duel. You've got a lot to learn, Harry. Is this safe? Of course it's safe. Uh, well, mostly. OK, dueling is really simple. All you have to do is try and hit your opponent with the knockback jinx. Every time you hit your opponent, you get closer to disarming him. And don't forget, fully charged knockback jinxes can be cast by holding the X button down and then releasing it. But don't worry, Harry. Fred will go easy on you this time. OK, let's duel. Get ready! Duel! Young Fox is going to have to be on his guard this afternoon. Weasley's a master tactician. Nice work from Potter. For a beginner, he's doing really well. Great play by Potter. He's really holding his own. Great work there. That's lovely work. Done, Harry! You won the first round! Get ready! Jewel! And the duel gets underway, with Fred coming quickly into his rhythm. Ow! Ah. Ow. Great work there. Ow. Lovely work from Potter. Weasley's got his work cut out now. Look at that. This is turning into a classic match. Ow! Ah! 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 Nice stuff there. Ow! to play for. Get ready! Jewel! The duel gets underway with Fred going quickly ah. into his rhythm. Ow. Nice work from Potter. Ah. For a beginner, he's doing ah. really well. Ah. Ah. Great work there. Ah. Ow. Nice work from Potter. For ah. a beginner, he's doing really well. Ah. Ow. That's terrific stuff. Ah. Ah. Expelliarmus! Ah. Well done, Harry. Now let's try again. 
but this time we'll introduce some special jinxes. Good idea, Fred. See that TV? See the way it's sparkling? That means it's got a special jinx in it. To get the special jinx, you have to force me to hit the TV with one of my jinxes. That will release an orb that you can run over and pick up. Anything that sparkles like the TV has got a special jinx in it, so remember to look out for the sparkles. Oh, I nearly forgot. Special jinxes can only be cast using the circle button. That's important. Come on, let's give it a try. Get ready! Jewel! Oh, nice work from Potter. For a beginner, he's doing really well. Harry, you won the first round! Get ready! Jewel! Ow! Oh my word! That's real skill from the youngster! Ah! 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 Great work there! Ah! Beautiful play by Weasley! Lovely work from Potter. Weasley's got his work cut out now. Ah! Ow! Expelliarmus! Ah! Wow, look at that! You're a natural, Harry! We need to find Ginny. She's wandered off somewhere, and the whole family is waiting so we can go to Diagon Alley and get our school supplies. We'd better split up and find her. Oh, by the way, watch out for some of Dad's junk. If you come across any, use your knockback jinx or your Wingardium Leviosa to defend yourself. If you find you're getting a little low on health, chocolate frogs will help replenish your energy. So keep an eye out for them. Right, let's split up. I'll go this way. See you soon, Harry. And good luck!
Yusha.
Hengist of Woodcroft. Wingardium <laughs> Leviosa! You came. My puff skein swallowed my rememberal and I got lost trying to find him. A rememberal tells you that there's something you've forgotten to do. You can have it, Harry. I don't have my wand on me now, so use your knockback jinx on the puff skein and he'll spit it out. Nice work, Harry. Hope Dad's junk wasn't too much of a problem for you. Right, we better get back to the house. Mum and Dad are waiting to take us to Diagon Alley. As you've never travelled by flu powder before, you need to know a few things. When you're in the fireplace, say where you're going. And keep your elbows tucked in. Mind you get out at the right fireplace. Are you sure this is safe? Piece of cake! Diagon <coughs> Alley! Harry had no idea where he was. All he could tell was that he wasn't in Diagon Alley. Evil-looking masks stared down from the wall, and rusty, spiked instruments hung from the ceiling. The sooner I get out of here, the better. Harry heard a noise from the door nearby, and two blurry shapes appeared on the other side of the glass. Harry looked quickly around and spotted a large black cabinet. He shot inside it and pulled the doors closed, leaving a small crack to peer through. Seconds later, a bell clanged. And Draco Malfoy stepped into the shop. The man who was with Draco could only be his father, Lucius Malfoy. Touch nothing, Draco. Mr. Malfoy was trying to sell the shopkeeper certain dark magical items that he didn't want the Ministry of Magic to find out about. Harry went to Flourish and Blots to buy his books. While he was in there, Gilderoy Lockhart, Hogwarts' new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, was signing his latest book. Nice big smile, Harry. Together you and I were the front page. Harry met up with Ron and Ginny Weasley. Lucius and Draco Malfoy were also there. Famous Harry Potter. Can't even go into a bookshop without making the front page. Ginny, who was very fond of Harry, defended him. Leave him alone. He didn't want all that. Lucius Malfoy insulted the scruffy state of the second-hand books Ginny had bought. I suppose those books are the best your father can give you. Lucius plucked a copy of 
A Beginner's Guide to Transformation from Ginny's Cauldron, examined it briefly, and then replaced it. No one at that time realized how much of an effect this gesture from Lucius Malfoy would have on their lives, and they all left the shop, none the wiser. They found the car in Charing Cross Road, and after making it invisible, flew it into the sky over London. They saw the Hogwarts Express far below and followed it for some time. Looks like we've lost the train. Let's check out that tunnel. <laughs> Looks like we found the train, Ron. Try not to scratch the paintwork or my dad will kill me. Speed boost to stay ahead of the train and watch out for any obstacles.
That was really close. I didn't think we'd make it out of the tunnel. Excellent, Harry. <laughs> that is Hogwarts. Try and land the car in the castle grounds. There's something wrong with the car. I don't have control anymore. Mind that tree! <laughs> tree and cast a spell at what looks like his mouth. By the time Harry and Ron had escaped from the Whomping Willow, the sorting ceremony had already begun. They peered in at the Great Hall and watched as the aged, old sorting hat placed new students into the four Hogwarts houses as it had for so many years past. Harry remembered putting the sorting hat on a year ago, and for a few horrible seconds he had feared the hat was going to put him into Slytherin along with Draco Malfoy. Not Slytherin, eh? Well, if you're sure, better be Gryffindor! But of course, he had ended up in Gryffindor, along with Ron and Hermione. As they watched the sorting, Harry noticed that at least one teacher was missing from the staff table. Hang on, where's Snape? And then, from behind him, came the voice Harry dreaded to hear. It was Professor Snape, Harry's least favorite teacher. I'm waiting to hear why you two didn't arrive on the school train. It was a great start to the term, thought Harry, as they followed Snape to his office. Once there, Snape nastily admonished them about flying the car to Hogwarts. You will go immediately to your common room, and I will think about how to punish you. George must have flown that car five or six times, and they never had an accident. I really thought we'd get expelled for sure. Come on, Ron. Let's go to the Gryffindor common room. Do you think you can remember the way? No problem. Follow me.
Harry Potter <laughs> mustn't stay at Hogwarts. If I took your picture, everyone told me about how you survived when you know who tried to kill you. And you really do have that lightning scar on your forehead. It's brilliant here, isn't it? Flying a car right into the Whomping Willow? People will be talking about that one for years. Brilliant! What an entrance! We'd better get to the common room before Snape sees us. office. I'm surprised he can get his big head through the door. Oh. 
Password? Uh, pig snout? Caput Draconis? I'm sorry, but that is not the password. Oh no! We don't know the password for the fat lady's portrait. Now we won't be able to get in. Ron, you are here to see if another Gryffindor passes by. I'll find Hermione. She'll know the password. Hello there, young Harry Potter. Yes, what a fine day. You look happy, Nick. That I am, Harry. I sent a letter today to Sir Patrick Delaney Podmore. It's my application to join the Headless Hunt. In fact, as I was telling your friend Hermione Granger, joining the Headless Hunt has been a dream of mine for some time. Is Hermione here? Of course. Be careful, though. There are some rather mischievous books around. Use your knockback jinx to put them in their place.
Harry, I can't believe that you and Ron are so irresponsible. You could have been killed, or worse, expelled. The password for the fat lady is Wattlebird. Of course you would have known this if you had managed to get to school on time. Harry, don't forget to keep checking your report card. Harry, we really need to get into the common room. Password? Wattlebird! We made it! Looks like this year they're awarding health cups for excellence in herbology and defence against the dark arts. It would be great if Gryffindor won them. Come on, you two. Herbology's about to start. You don't want to be late for that, too. I forgot how much I missed her. Come on, Harry. Have you heard about the secret founder jewels yet? Behind us is a statue. You can use it to find the entrances to the secret founder jewels. Defeat each founder house duelist to win a Hogwarts founder famous witches and wizards card. Collect them all and you can enter the special founder's tower. No one we know has ever managed to beat all the founder duelists and enter the founder's tower. We'd really like to know what's inside. That's where you come in, Harry. We think you have the potential to defeat every duelist and win all the Founder's Wizards cards. To open up each of the duels, you have to have a certain number of Famous Witches and Wizards cards. Everyone knows that finding Famous Witches and Wizards cards can be very difficult. So, we're willing to sell you five of them, Harry. It's a good deal. Give us 50 Bertie Bots every flavour beans, and we'll give you a Famous Witches and Wizards card in return. Brilliant! You have 50 every flavour beans. Have a famous Witches and Wizards card. Ignatia Wildsmith. Brilliant. You have 50 every flavour beans. Have a famous... Greta Catchlove. Brilliant. You have 50... Chauncey Aldridge. Brilliant. You have 50 every flavour beans. Herpo the Fowl. Brilliant. You have 50 every flavour beans. Paracelsus. Sorry, Harry, but if you want more famous witches and wizards cards, then you'll have to find them hidden around Hogwarts. Wow, the Gryffindor common room. I'm going to take some pictures to send home to my dad. Have a look at my photo album, Harry. It's on the table. My photos aren't like ordinary photographs. My photos are magic. Come on, Herbology's in one of the greenhouses outside. Let's go.
Gaspard Shingleton. To get to the greenhouses, we need to go outside. If we're going outside, let's keep away from the Whomping Willow. Don't remind me. Apologies this way. It's her bology next. Come on. I heard about the flying car. Classic! Professor Sprout has put me here to tell all students where Greenhouse 3 is. It's through here. Phew! We made it. This is the door to the Herbology classroom. See you in there, Harry. Get to Herbology class before the timer runs out. Walk through the floating hourglasses to start the timer. If you beat the school record for the quickest time to class, Professor Sprout may reward you with something special. Well done. You've set a new record time. Here is the Herbology Race Cup as a reward. Well done, Harry. Welcome to Herbology.
please be careful of the venomous tentacula. It's teething. An A, B, or C grade can be achieved in this class. There will be rewards for excellence, so try your best. Watch my wand move around the screen and press the symbols it points to. Complete each sequence three times to learn the Incendio Duo spell. Get ready. Perfect. 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 Most impressive. Now try this one. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. 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 Bravo! Now concentrate. It's going to get harder. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Mr. Potter, you have achieved an A grade in herbology. Well done. Here is the herbology lesson cup for your hard work in achieving the highest possible grade. Potter, follow me. I have a little task for you. Welcome to Greenhouse 3. This is a mandrake. Its cry is very dangerous, which is why you're wearing earmuffs. I need you to collect at least three mandrakes from this greenhouse. Of course, the more mandrakes you collect, the more house points for Gryffindor. Harry, wait! What? Speak up, Hermione! Look! That mandrake's being attacked by those giant slugs! Keep the slugs away from the mandrake using your Incendio Duo spell. Once the slugs are out of the way, use Wingardium Leviosa to pull them out. Good luck, Harry! Wingardium Leviosa!
Wingardium Leviosa! Wingardium Leviosa! Wingardium Leviosa!
superb. You managed to save all the mandrakes. Fifty house points to Gryffindor. Off you go now. You can keep trying to beat the school record for the Herbology lesson race if you go through this door. Harry, it's time to practice your seeker skills. Meet me at the Quidditch training pitch, across the bridge from Hogwarts' main entrance. Hedwig will show the way. Oliver Wood. I've missed Herbology, and Professor Sprout's going to be really angry. Hello, Neville. What happened? I got lost, and ended up coming out this wall behind me. It must be a secret passage. Harry, I'm still waiting for you to attend Quidditch training. Meet me at the Quidditch training pitch across the bridge from Hogwarts' main entrance. Oliver Wood. Hello again, Potter. I'm still trying to get into the Quidditch team. Maybe this year I'll have some luck. Could you mention me to Oliver Wood? You are the Gryffindor seeker after all. All right, Harry. Grab your broomstick and we'll begin the training. Welcome to Quidditch training. In a Quidditch match, whichever seeker catches the Golden Snitch scores their team 150 points. Which is why Seekers tend to get fouled so much, and also why we need to keep training. First off, we're going to practice your basic broom controls on a special training broom. This broom won't let you fly far from the ground, so we can concentrate on practicing your steering. Steer left and right to fly between the poles and use the X button to speed up. Try and finish the course before my stopwatch counts down. Get set. 3, 2, 1. Fly through the poles hard. That's it, Harry. That's it, Harry. That's good. Good work. Keep it up. That's it, Harry. Excellent. 
For that performance, you've earned your gold wings and 25 heist points for Gryffindor. Right, Harry. Now we're going to move on to the next stage. I've got two broomsticks to choose from. You should try them both out to see which one you prefer. Here's the first one. Try it out by flying through these rings. Some people prefer the up and down controls the other way around. This second broom will let you try with these controls. Do you want to try them again? So Harry, which one did you prefer? Select if you decide to change controls later, you can do so from the options screen. You've completed basic Quidditch training and now can play in the Quidditch League. Let's continue on to the advanced training. You've completed basic Quidditch training. Would you like to quit? OK, now let's practice chasing the snitch. The training broom will now let you fly up and down. For the first part of your seeker training, let's see if you can fly through 10 hoops generated by the snitch. Get ready, Potter! 3, 2, 1, release the snitch, Colin! Fly through the rings, Harry. That's good. That's it, Harry. Good work. Keep it up. That's good. Excellent. For that performance, you've earned your gold wings and 25 heist points for Gryffindor. Time for your second seeker training lesson. You seem to have gotten the hang of chasing the snitch. Let's see if you're any good at catching it. Fly through 10 rings, then move your hand over the snitch and hit the X button when it appears on screen. On my mark. 3, 2, 1. Fly through the rings, hand. That's good. That's it, Harry. That's good. That's it, Harry. Brilliant. For that performance, you've earned your gold wings and 25 house points for Gryffindor. In a Quidditch match, whichever team's seeker catches the Golden Snitch scores 150 points for their team. This often results in that seeker's team winning the match. Let's see how you manage catching a Snitch whilst racing against another seeker. Ready? 3, 2, 1. Fly through the rings, Harry. Good work. Keep it up. That's it, Harry. Good work. Keep it up. That's it, Harry. That's good. That's good. That's good. If you miss a ring, Harry, don't worry. Just keep going for the next one. That's it, Harry. That's it, Harry. That's it, Harry. That's it, Harry. Try harder. Good work. Keep it up. Good work. Keep it up. Good work. Keep it up. Excellent. For that performance, you've earned your gold wings and 25 house points for Gryffindor. 
good session, Harry. The Quidditch training doors are always open for you. Hey, Harry! Fancy a bit of dueling practice? I don't know. Do you think it's a good idea? Yeah, why not? I've beaten Fred before, you know. Anyway, if you're going to win against all the Founders' champions, you need to practice. That's true. How about here, then? This looks good. Let's say the path divides us, so it's like a proper arena. You can't cross it, and neither can I. Remember, Harry, you cast knockback jinxes in the same way you usually do with the X button, but special jinxes are cast using the circle button. And look, those flowers are sparkling, so that means they'll have special jinxes hidden inside them. Right, let's go. Get ready! Jewel! Ow! Ow! That's it. Stay focused. You should be and dodge my jinxes. Ow! Right, watch out. I'm really going to try and get you now. Good shot, Harry. Ow! Well played, Harry. That's round one to you. Get ready! Jewel! Right, watch out! I'm really going to try and get you now. That's it! Stay focused, use your feet and dodge my jinxes. Wow, brilliant, Harry. You're really good. I reckon you could beat nearly anyone now. Have you heard that Slytherin have a new seeker? I wonder who it could be. It's me. And look at what my father has brought the whole Slytherin team. Very latest model. Only came out last month. I believe it considerably outstrips the old 2000 series. At least no one on the Gryffindor team had to buy their way in. No one asked your opinion, you filthy little mudblood. You'll pay for that now, boy! Ron, are you alright? I don't feel so cool. <laughs> Ron, you'd better get to Hagrid's quick. Follow Ron, Harry, and don't let him out of your sight. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right, Harry, we gotta let these slugs run their course. I'll give you a fangs bowl to catch them in. Move the bowl under Ron to catch them. Try and empty the slugs into the barrel as often as you can using the square button, or it'll overflow. Hurry up, Harry. Good luck. <laughs> Well done, Harry. That was a great effort. How are you feeling, Ron? Oh, I never want to see another slug as long as I live. Next time I'll get Malfoy for sure. How can he call Hermione a mudblood? Ron, it's only a word. Yeah, but that word's the most insulting thing he could think of. Mudblood is a really unpleasant name for someone whose parents are non-magical. There are some wizards who think they are better than everyone else because they're pure blood. Thanks for defending me, Ron. Especially the way your wand's been behaving. Yuck! I can still taste the slugs. I think I need to go and brush my teeth again. Gosh! Look at the time! We'd better get to Professor Lockhart's defence against the Dark Arts class. Do we have to? Really, Harry? I don't know what you've got against Professor Lockhart. He's a fantastic teacher. Well, he seems to think so. Defence against the Dark Arts can be found in the Upper Castle. I'll show you the way, Harry.
This should be a really interesting lesson. Professor Lockhart is probably the bravest wizard who's ever lived. Is that why you've marked all Lockhart's lesson with little hearts on your timetable? I have not. Are you okay, Harry? I'm fine. Come on, let's go. Jacinda Sykes.
Musa. Cassandra Vablatsky. Excellent. Well done, Harry. I knew you'd be the first to get to my class. I don't seem to have any signed photos on me at the moment, uh, but have this Defense Against the Dark Arts race cup instead. Class, I'm Gilderoy Lockhart, five times winner of Witch Weekly's Most Charming Smile Award. <laughs> 
Today I'm going to teach you the total body bind spell Petrificus Totalus. Watch my expensive wand as it moves and press the symbols it points to. Do this three times and you will learn Petrificus Totalus. Are you ready? Perfection! 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 Splendid! That's the easy one. Ready now? Perfection! Perfection! Splendid! Splendid! One more to go. Get ready. Splendid! Very stylish! <laughs> Just like me. Very stylish! <laughs> Just like me. You've earned a grade A. Congratulations. You've earned the Defense Against the Dark Arts Lesson Cup for your hard work. Well done! You have now won all the House Cups and Shields. A Founder Famous Witches and Wizards card is now waiting for you in your common room. Excellent! Quite excellent! <laughs> And so to business. Now be warned. You may find yourself facing your worst fears in this room. No harm can befall you whilst I am here. Remain calm. Ready? A freshly caught Cornish pixie! Don't worry, I stunned this one earlier. We are quite safe. Um, well, I'll ask you three just to put this little fellow and any others back into their cages. Uh, I'll see you after the lesson. Looks like Lockhart wants to give us some hands-on experience. I'll take care of this one. When a pixie sparkle is red, you can use your new spell. Your wand has to be fully charged to stun a pixie. Petrificus Titalus. You can only levitate him when he's been stunned. Wingardium Leviosa. Steer the pixie over the cage and drop him in. Simple. Now you try with the second one, Harry. Ron and I are going to round up the others. Isn't Professor Lockhart wonderful? OK, I'll try my best, but my wand's been acting very funny lately. Petrificus <laughs> Totalus. Wingardium Leviosa. Harry, I'll make sure these don't escape while you go and capture the rest. Very good, Potter. Uh, you'd better check on young Mr. Weasley upstairs. Catch you later. Thank <laughs> you. 
the test. Obviously, I could have defeated these pixies with just a few twirls of my wand. 20 points to Gryffindor for being excellent students. Isn't he wonderful? Hello, I wonder if you three could do something for me. This Halloween will be my 500th death day. Tomorrow I'm holding a party down in one of the roomier dungeons. Friends will be coming from all over the country. It will be such an honor if you, Mr. Weasley, and Miss Granger would attend. Perhaps you could mention to Sir Patrick how very impressive and frightening you find me. It may help me to get into the headless hunt. I'll see you all tomorrow down in the dungeons. Cheerio. A death day party? There can't be many living people who can say they've been to one of those. I've never heard of a death day party before. Sounds dead depressing to me. The race for the house cup continues. Ravenclaw. Hufflepuff. Slytherin. Gryffindor. Gryffindor are in the lead on house points. The race for the house cup is heating up. Hermione and Ron are already at my death day party. Come on, Harry, you don't want to be late. Yes, I'll see you in the dungeons. Be quick. You don't want to miss the celebrations. Come on, Harry, you don't want to be late. At my party, there's maggoty haggis, fairy green cheese, and a tombstone cake. Delicious, eh? This way, Harry. Wasn't that nearly headless Nick, the Gryffindor house ghost? 
Yes, Colin, it was. It's brilliant here, isn't it? Keep out, pumpkin patch, Hagrid. Hi Harry, welcome to my football challenge. This is the type of training that West Ham, my favourite team uses. If you can kick the soccer ball between 10 of those flashing poles within the time limit, you'll win a prize. The timer will begin when the ball goes between the first set of posts. Good luck Harry.
This way, Harry! I have a special Death Day speech prepared. This way, Harry! I really do think that this will be a death day to remember. This way, Harry! It's Potty Wee Potter. He can't get across. Oh, what a baby. He's all at a loss. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 
the dungeon is a nasty place, but you'll fit in with that ugly face. <laughs> Can't find your pals, Potty. Don't cry. <laughs> Potty, don't cry. <coughs> Poor old Potty can't find his way to the party. for you. Let's go, Harry. recommend the mouldy bread and the stinking salmon. Watch out for Peeves, Harry. He's in one of his mischievous moods. Feel free to mingle, Harry. Ron and Hermione are around here somewhere. Happy Death Day, Nick. I think Ron has a present for you. I'll go and tell him to bring it over. Use your knockback jinx to get the prison back. Oh! <laughs> 
The voice was growing fainter, and Harry was sure it was moving away, moving upwards. He began to run, his stomach lurching. Something was shining on the wall ahead. Harry approached slowly, squinting through the darkness. Mrs. Norris, Filch's cat, was hanging by her tail from a torch bracket. She was as stiff as a board, her eyes wide and staring. Foot-high words had been daubed on the wall above the petrified cat. Harry shuddered as he read them. The Chamber of Secrets has been opened. Enemies of the air, beware. Before Harry could leave, several people appeared in the corridor. When Filch saw Mrs. Norris, he screeched accusingly at Harry. You! You've murdered my cat! You've killed her! <laughs> and then Draco Malfoy shouted out to everyone gathered. Enemies of the air, beware! You'll be next, mudbloods! Professor Dumbledore calmed everyone down and sent them all to bed. Ron reckoned that he had an idea who the heir of Slytherin was, and both he and Harry went to meet Hermione in the library. I'm sure that Draco Malfoy is the heir of Slytherin. I think he might be right. And if he is, I know a way we can prove it. Polyjuice Potion! Poly what? Polyjuice Potion can transform a person into someone else, even a Slytherin. We could trick Malfoy into admitting he's the heir. To make the Polyjuice Potion, we'll need several ingredients. Lacewing flies, leeches, fluxweed, knocked grass, horn of bicorn and shredded boomslang. OK, I'll get the knockgrass and flaxweed. Harry, you can get the leeches, lacewing flies and shredded boomslang. And I'll get the horn of bicorn. You two had better get to potions, class. When I find a place to prepare the polyjuice potion, I'll send Hedwig. Silence! Mixing potions is a very precise science. I suggest that Potter, Weasley and Longbottom listen carefully to my every word. This year, like last year, I won't allow any disobedience. Pay attention, Potter. You are going to remind us how to mix a Wiganweld potion. If you remember, you must first activate the cauldron. <coughs> With this done, you must then press the three symbols indicated until the cauldron fills. Good enough. Only a fool would expect better of you. Now remember, when the cauldron is full, you can activate it to gain the Wiganweld potion. Class dismissed. Hello there. I wonder if you boys could do me a favor. Of course, Hagrid. It's nearly Halloween, and my pumpkin patch has been overrun with gnomes. Can you help me to get rid of them? I'll help, Hagrid. But I think Ron has some things he needs to do. I do? Like getting some knocked grass and flux weed? Oh yeah, just make sure that you don't forget the boomslang skin, uh, leg swings and leeches. Leeches? Oh, nasty creatures. But if you're after some boomslang skin, I've got some in my hut. 
need this stuff for homework, do you? Uh, yes, that's right. Homework! For potions! All right then, Harry. I'll make a deal with you. Get rid of them gnomes in my pumpkin patch, and I'll give you some boom slang skin. Okay, Hagrid. It's a deal. Let's see if you can get these blasted gnomes out of my pumpkin patch. Do well enough, and I'll give you some boom slang skin. To fling the gnomes, press the square button, which will help you build up speed. The faster you press, the more speed you gain. When you reach the fence, press the triangle button when you're ready to chuck the little pest out of my pumpkin patch. Try and throw the gnomes as far as you can, Harry. You'll get points for distance and extra points for every target you hit. Fantastic! That's your all-time highest score. Well done! Edgar Struger. Well done, Harry. Here, have some boom slang skin. You've earned it. Wasn't that fun, Harry? Do you want to play again? Thanks for saving me pumpkins, Harry. I hope you find a good use for that boom slang skin. Bearded stoats, look at the time. You better run off to the Quidditch pitch. Your first match against Slytherin's about to start. There you are. Come on, you'll be late for Quidditch. Did you manage to get the fluxweed and not grass? I got some fluxweed, but it wasn't easy. Come on, we better get to the Quidditch pitch before it's too late. And as we join this important Quidditch game between Slytherin and Gryffindor, it is a tense moment. Slytherin are leading 60 points to nothing on the fastest racing brooms goal can buy. 
It's down to you, Harry. Catching the snitch is the only way we're going to win. You've got to beat Malfoy. I can't shake this bludger. What's going on? All right there, Scarhead. Someone's tampered with this bludger. There's the golden snitch. Malfoy's on it, and Potter's chasing. There they go after the snitch. It's heading for the stands. Amazing. I've lost sight of them. Harry's arm was hanging at a very strange angle, but in his good hand, he held the snitch. Aha! We've won! Lockhart told Harry to lie back as he tried to mend his arm with a charm. A strange and unpleasant sensation started at his shoulder and spread all the way down to his fingertips. His arm didn't hurt anymore, nor did it feel remotely like an arm. Ah! Yes. Uh, well, that can sometimes happen. So, Harry, just toddle up to the hospital wing. Madame Pomfrey will be able to, um, tidy you up a bit. The next moment, Dumbledore and McGonagall were backing into the room, carrying what looked like a statue. Together, they heaved it onto a bed. It means that the Chamber of Secrets is indeed open again. Hermione whispered to Harry that it was about time he collected together the ingredients for the Polyjuice Potion. As soon as your arm is better, I think you should go to Diagon Alley. It was half term by the time Harry's arm was better, and following Hermione's advice, he caught the train to London. Harry met Hagrid in Diagon Alley. Get your supplies, Harry. I'm going to the pub to meet some old friends. I'll meet you back here in a while. Gone on holiday. Back next year. Gone bird watching in Wales. Ooh. 
We are closed due to daylight robbery. Back at Seven O'Cloak. Harry, I found the perfect place to make the polyjuice potion. Moaning Myrtle's bathroom in the upper castle. Come as soon as you have all the ingredients. Yours, Hermione. We apologise to our customers for the temporary closure. We are still tidying up after Gilderoy Lockhart's last visit. Wandered out for a spell. We'll return later. Nice earmuffs, Potter. Did your mum make them for you? Oh, I am sorry. I forgot. Malfoy, you're almost as funny as Filch. Now get out of my way. All right, Four Eyes. Oh, by the way, I've left a nice prize for you in this shop. Enjoy. Today is a Goblin Bank holiday, therefore we are closed. Ooh, what a lovely young man you are! Don't milk it, boy! My reservoir of compliments has run dry! Now go away! Please help me. Somebody's released a gang of pixies in my shop and they're wrecking the place. I'll give you anything you need if you can stop them before they destroy my shop. Pay you. Have you got any leeches? There you are. And thanks again for your help. Welcome to the Magical Menagerie. It doesn't look very Christmassy in here, does it? Is this better? How can I help you? Can I have some lacewing flies, please? I do indeed have some lacewing flies in stock, but they move too quickly for me to catch. They're hiding in one of these boxes. If you can catch five for me, I'll let you keep them. You need to collect all the flies within the time limit. Be more careful, you're breaking all my merchandise. You must start again now.
Well done. You've collected all the flies. I certainly won't be missing them. Now, buzz off. If you've got all your stuff, we'd best be getting back to Hogwarts. Well done getting all the ingredients I asked for. Did you manage to get any powdered horn of bicorn? Yes, but I had to sneak into Snape's office last night to get it. She wouldn't get me creeping about in Snape's office, especially at night. Here's the fluxweed and not grass. And here are the boomslang skin, lace wings and leeches. How long until the polyjuice potion's ready? I'm afraid we still need some extra ingredients. Something from Crab and Goyle. I've already managed to get some hair from Millicent Bulstrode. I hope you're not saying that you're going to turn us into Crab, Goyle and Millicent Bulstrode. Well, Crab and Goyle in particular are the only people Malfoy trusts. He'll tell them anything. You do want to find out whether Malfoy's the heir of Slytherin, don't you? Of course we do. I just hope that the Polyjuice potion will wear off. That's all. Of course it will. Ron? I think you should try and steal some hair from Crab and Goyle after lunch. They like to have a nap after feeding their faces. I've got a bad feeling about this. Come on, Ron. Let's leave Hermione to prepare the potion. This is a girl's bathroom. You're not a girl. Get out! My life was nothing but misery at this place. And now people are coming along, ruining my death. Hogwarts is like a maze. I suggest you follow the carpet if you want to get back to the common room. I suppose I'd best get some hair from Crab and Goyle. Good luck. I'll meet you by the common room later. Adalbert Waffling. Malfoy are in the Great Hall. They've enrolled in the Dueling Club. I wonder who'll be teaching it. 
Let's hope it's not Lockhart. I've had enough of him for one day. Have you heard? Malfoy's in the Great Hall, and he's challenging everybody to a duel. Yeah, and no one's beaten him yet. Why don't you go in and duel with him, Harry? I hear you're pretty good. Go on, Harry. I'm sure you can beat him. It'll be great to wipe that smile off his slimy Slytherin face. Great Harry Potter. Fancy a duel? I'm something of an expert. Go on, Harry. You can do it. Better watch out for the candles, Potter. They've got special jinxes in them. Trust me, you're going to need all the help you can get. Get ready. Duel. makes you the winner, you've got another thing coming. Try this, Potter. Serpent Sortier. Oh, oh, oh. Hissing furiously, the snake slithered towards Justin Finch Fletchley. Leave him alone, Harry shouted. At least, that was what he thought he'd shouted. When he looked up at Justin, he was met with an angry look. What do you think you're playing at? The snake 
was lying slumped on the floor, docile as a thick black garden hose. So why was Justin, and everybody else for that matter, regarding him with a look of horror? You're a parcel mouth, Harry. Why didn't you tell us? Harry didn't know what a parcel mouth was, so Ron told him. <laughs> you can talk to snakes, Harry! Hermione informed Harry that being able to talk to snakes was what Salazar Slytherin was famous for, and how the whole school was now going to think that he, Harry Potter, was the heir of Slytherin, and therefore responsible for the attacks. Dumbledore wasn't in his office when Harry got there. It was a very interesting room, however, and nearby Harry spotted the sorting hat. As he approached it, the hat spoke to him. You've been wondering whether I put you in the right house, but I stand by what I said before. You would have done well in Slytherin. Harry's heart plummeted. He told the hat he thought it was wrong, and then a strange gagging noise behind him made him wheel around. Harry yelled in shock as the bird burst into flames, only to emerge from the fire more beautiful than it was before. Then the office door opened, and Dumbledore came in. Fawkes the Phoenix is really very handsome, isn't he, Harry? Harry nodded, still shocked by the sight of the bird bursting into flames. Dumbledore explained how phoenixes were fascinating creatures. They can carry immensely heavy loads, and they make highly faithful pets. Dumbledore went on to say that he didn't believe Harry was the attacker plaguing Hogwarts, and he asked if Harry had anything that he wanted to tell him. Harry thought of the disembodied voice he'd heard, and his growing dread that he was connected to Salazar Slytherin. But in the end, he didn't want to say anything about them. Now that everyone knows you're a parcel mouth, they've convinced you're the heir of Slytherin. You don't think it's me, do you? Of course not. There's no way you're the heir, Harry. Thanks. We need to finish the Polyjuice Potion and prove that Malfoy is the heir of Slytherin. That way we can clear your name. Ron, did you manage to get some hair from Crab and Goyle? Yes, I did. But I'm telling you, it wasn't easy. OK, I'm sure I've done everything right. Once we've drunk the potion, there won't be much time before we turn back. Now what? We each have some of the potion, add the hairs and then drink it. I'm still not sure about this. Ready? Ready? As I'll ever be. One, two, three. Are you two all right? Yeah, unbelievable. Hermione, are you okay? Fine, I'm fine. Go on without me. Well, if you're sure, we'll meet you back here later. Hermione said that we may have some difficulty moving because Crab and Goo are bigger than us. OK. I won't try jumping across any gap. We'd better get going before the effects of the Polyjuice Potion run out. We need to find out where the Slivering Cupboard Room is. I hope we can find somewhere to follow. There's a Slivering now! Quick! Follow him and don't lose sight of him!
you are. Have you two been pigging out in the Great Hall all this time? How did you know? People seem to think that Saint Potter, the Mudblood's friend, is the heir of Slytherin. I wish I knew who it really is. I could help them. You must have some idea who's behind it all. You know I haven't, Goyle. How many times do I have to tell you? But I know one thing. Last time the Chamber of Secrets was opened, a mudblood died. So I bet it's only a matter of time before one of them is killed this time. I hope it's Granger. Get out! This is a girl's bathroom! No boys allowed in here! She's gone mental! Change the flying objects before they hit you! is throwing a book at me. Let's all throw books at Myrtle because she can't feel it. What a lovely game, I don't think. Here, why don't you have it? I'm glad we changed back. I didn't like being crab one bit. I wonder where Hermione went. I hope nothing went wrong with her potion. Harry, I'm very displeased that you missed my new defense against the Dark Arts class. To be a successful wizard, you have to study with the best. Come along to my office for a private lesson. Professor Gilderoy Lockhart. Looks like you're still Lockhart's number one student. Remember that Lockhart's office is in the lower castle. I thought it was bad enough with everyone thinking I was the heir of Slytherin. A private lesson with Lockhart is much worse. I'm going to see if I can find Hermione. I wonder what went wrong with her potion and where she went. Everyone's saying that Potter's the heir of Slytherin. Potter's a parcel mouth. Everyone knows that's the mark of a dark wizard. <laughs> Professor Lockhart's just left. Said he was going to his office. Harry, her man is in the hospital wing. The polyjuice potion turned her into a cat. Seems like the hair from Millicent wasn't from her at all. I hope Madame Pomfrey doesn't ask too many questions. Anyway, I suppose I should be going to the private lesson with Lockhart.
Ah, oh, Harry, you finally made it. Terrible news about young Mr. Creevy being petrified, not to mention poor Mrs. Norris. No need to worry, though, as your defense against the dark arts teacher, I'll save the day. Watch my expensive wand as it moves and press the symbols it points to. Do this three times and you will learn Verdimilius Duo. Are you ready? Very stylish! <laughs> Just like me. Perfection! Perfection! Splendid! That's the easy one. Ready now? Splendid! Perfection! Splendid! Perfection! One more to go. Get ready. Splendid! 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 You've earned a great A! Congratulations! Splendid! Crispin Cronk! Excellent! Quite excellent! And so to business. Time to put the spell you've learned to practical use. Now Harry, hold down the X button to cast a fully charged Verdimilius Duo spell! Once cast, the spell will show you objects hidden by dark magic. Use what you find to leave the room. Excellent, Harry! I knew you would do it! I'll have to watch myself in a few years' time, or you'll be stealing my job. Now, run along. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, and I have something very special planned. The race for the house cup continues. Ravenclaw. Hufflepuff. Slytherin. Gryffindor. Gryffindor are in the lead on house points. The race for the house cup is heating up. Happy Valentine's Day, Harry! How many cards have you received? So far, I've only received um, 46. Hmm, but the day is still young. I've arranged a little surprise for you and the rest of the students at Hogwarts. My friendly card-carrying cupids! Oh, you, Harry Potter, stay there. I've got a musical message to deliver to you. 
Valentine's cards. Ugh! Keep away from me! Harry flicked through the blank pages of the diary. Then he pulled out a bottle of scarlet ink, dipped his quill into it, and dropped a blot onto the first page. Excited, Harry loaded up his quill and wrote, My name is Harry Potter. Then, at last, something happened. Oozing back out of the page came words Harry had never written. Harry nearly upset his ink bottle and then more words appeared on the page. I know all about the Chamber of Secrets. Fifty years ago, the chamber was opened and a girl was killed. I caught the person who opened the chamber all those years ago. Harry paused for a second and then wrote two letters. O. K. The pages of the diary began to blow as though caught in a high wind, and then the diary seemed to open up and Harry was pitched headfirst into the opening. Harry saw that he was standing in a corridor in Hogwarts dungeons. Peering through a crack made by an open door was a boy of about sixteen. Harry knew at once that this was Tom Riddle, the owner of the diary. Then Harry heard someone speaking in a low whisper. Come on, we've got to get you out of here. Come on now, in the box. The voice definitely belonged to Hagrid, who, Harry now saw, was crouching down in front of a large box. Riddle suddenly stepped out from the doorway. Evening, Rebaeus. It's all over. I'm going to have to turn you in. The least Hogwarts can do is make sure the thing that killed that girl is slaughtered. The young Hagrid rose up to his full height and roared at the top of his voice. It wasn't him. He wouldn't. He never. And then, from out of the box, came something that made Harry let out a long, piercing scream, unheard by anyone. A vast, low-slung, hairy body, and a tangle of black legs, a gleam of many eyes, and a pair of razor-sharp pincers. The thing scuttled away, tearing up the corridor and out of sight. No! The scene whirled. The darkness became complete, and Harry landed with a crash. Later, Harry met up with Ron and Hermione. What's up? Harry could barely get the words out of his mouth. It was Hagrid, Ron. Hagrid opened the Chamber of Secrets 50 years ago. Riddle might have got the wrong person. Maybe it was some other monster that was attacking people. Hagrid would never have meant to kill anybody. 
We've always known that Hagrid was expelled. The attacks must have stopped after he was kicked out. I'm going to the library to see if I can find information on Tom Riddle. And while I'm there, why don't both of you go and see Hagrid and ask him what happened? We'd better be careful, Ron. We're not meant to be out in the grounds after dark. Let's split up to avoid getting caught. At least you can use your invisibility cloak to avoid being seen. Remember that you need to collect these to power up your cloak. They only last a short amount of time, so make sure you're out of sight when they run out. You can unlock the doors by using these pressure pads. You just need to charm a nearby object onto them. Wingardium Leviosa! Nice one, Harry. I'll meet you at Hagrid's. Good luck!
see anyone, Mr. Filch? No. I know you're there. Leviosa! No students are allowed in the grounds after dark. Pressure pad has a different image on it, and there are no objects to charm. Yet again, Cornelius, I tell you that taking Hagrid away will not help in the slightest. That must be Cornelius Fudge. 
He's the Minister of Magic. <laughs> my dad's boss. Quiet, Ron. Look at it from my point of view, Albus. I'm under a lot of pressure. Got to be seen to be doing something. If it turns out it wasn't Hagrid, he'll be back and no more said. So, where am I going? You'll only be going for a short stretch, Hagrid. It's not a punishment, more a precaution. If someone else is caught, you'll be let out with a full apology. Not Azkaban. Come along now, Hagrid. If anyone wanted to find out some stuff, all I'd have to do would be to follow the spiders. That'd lead them right. That's all I'm saying. Ron, look at all the spiders. I'm going to follow them. All right, be careful, Harry. I'll go and tell Hermione what we've heard. Hagrid said to follow the spiders. upon the waterfall and you shall see the light. Ah! 
Komodo.
friend of Hagrid's. <gasps> Hagrid's in trouble. That's why I came. In trouble? But why has he sent you? They've taken him to Azkaban. They think he set a monster on students. <laughs> I come from a distant land. A traveler gave me to Hagrid when I was an egg. He cared for me, kept me in a cupboard, and fed me. When I was blamed for the death of the girl, Hagrid protected me. Now, I live in the forest. So do you know what did kill her? The thing that lives in the castle is an ancient creature we spiders fear above all others. We don't speak its name. Okay, I'll just go then. Go? I think not. The car screeched to a halt and Harry dived inside. Hurry up, Ron! The door slammed shut and Ron didn't need to touch the accelerator because the car was already speeding away. They sped out of the hollow, branches whipping the windows as the car wound its way cleverly through the widest gaps, following a path it obviously knew. After ten noisy, rocky minutes, the trees thinned and the car stopped so suddenly they were nearly thrown through the windscreen. They had reached the edge of the forest. Harry and Ron arrived safely back in the Gryffindor common room. What was the point of going in there? What have we found out? I'd like to know. 
that Hagrid never opened the Chamber of Secrets. He was innocent. Harry, Ron, I'm sorry, but this will be a bit of a shock. There has been another attack. Oh, no. Who? I am very sorry, but your friend, Miss Granger, was found petrified near the library. I have asked all students to remain in their house common rooms. I also have some rather bad news for you in particular, Mr. Weasley. I'm sorry to tell you that your sister, Ginny, has gone missing. The suspicion is that she has been taken into the Chamber of Secrets. Oh, no! What are we going to do? Aragog mentioned that the last time the Chamber of Secrets was opened, a girl was found dead in the bathroom. What if she never left that bathroom? What if she's still there? Moaning Myrtle! Go to the girl's bathroom, Ron, and find Moaning Myrtle. I'm going to find Lockhart. Lockhart? Why? He's the defence against the Dark Arts teacher, and whatever's attacking people is definitely involved in the Dark Arts. OK, I'll meet you in the girls' bathroom. Ginny will be all right, won't she, Harry? Don't worry, Ron. We'll rescue her. And then I'll close the Chamber of Secrets for good. Come through here. Go away. If you haven't pulled that lever, young man. I'm warning you, don't come. I hope you haven't pulled that. Mr. Potter, I remember you from last year. If you want to get to the floor above, come on through, Mr. Potter. Want to get to the
Montague Knightley. Daisy Dodderidge. Incendio! Wattle bird. Godric Gryffindor. Time to put these denoming gloves to good use. Mum wants us to throw these gnomes over the fence and into that field of there's no magical junk. To fling a gnome, you're going to need a good run up. Hit the square button as quick as you can to build up speed. Once you reach the fence, you begin spinning on the spot. Press the triangle button when you're ready to throw the gnome. You get points for distance and for hitting the target.
triangle button to throw. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get that one, Harry. Good shot! You hit the pond! <laughs> Excellent, Harry. That's your all time high score. Yardley Platt. That was really good fun. Do you want to play again? Good luck, young Gryffindor. You'll need it. So you have found me. The Hufflepuff Wizard Dueling Champion. There's no way I'm going to let a Gryffindor student beat me. Come on, let's duel. Get ready. Duel. The match gets underway with both players quickly into their stride. seen anything like it. Ah. Oh, a great move from Potter. Ah. Oh, I say, I've never seen anything like it. Ah. Great play from Potter. Ow. Potter responds well. Oh, and that's the first round to Potter. Get ready. Jewel. Round two gets underway. Ah, well, look ow. at that. The champion is really showing his class there. Ah. 
things are really hot up ah! now. Great! Ow! Ow! Ah! Ow! Oh, that's fantastic! Ah! Expelliarmus! Ow! Whoa! Good shot! Blimey, Harry, you won! And look what you've done to my wand! Here, have this famous Witches and Wizards card. You deserve it. Helga Hufflepuff. Congratulations, young man. Quite a feat, let me assure you, beating the Hufflepuff dueling champion. Come on through, foolish Gryffindor. Welcome, Harry Potter, to the Ravenclaw Dueling Arena. I am the Ravenclaw Wizard Dueling Champion. I hear you're a tough competitor, but let me warn you, young Harry, very few have ever defeated me. Come on, let's duel. Get ready, duel! And the match gets underway with both players quickly into their strides. Oh, a great move, Potter. And Potter's really grabbed the game Ow. by the scruff of the neck now. Ah. Great play from Potter. Ah. Oh, and that's the first round to Potter. Get ready. Duel! Two gets underway. Ah. And Potter's really grabbed ah. the game by the scoop of the neck now. Ow. Ow. Oh, a great move from Potter. Ah. And Potter's really grabbed the game by the scoop of the neck now. Ah. Ah. Ow. Great play from Potter. Ah. Well, look at that. The champion really showing his class there. Potter responds well. Ow! Expelliarmus! Ah. Whoa! You beat me, Harry! And look out! Here goes my wand! You're not bad, are you? Here, have this famous Witches and Wizards card. Rowena Ravenclaw. Well done, Harry. I'm impressed. You emerge victorious. I shall be interested to see if you can beat the Slytherin dueling champion as well. Well, I expect this is the last I'll see you alive. Well, 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 Harry Potter. So, you've made it this far. I am the Slytherin Wizard Dueling Champion. You are courageous indeed to dare to come here. Come on, let's duel. Get ready, duel! And the match gets underway with both players getting quickly into their stride. Spawn 
as well. Ow. Oh, and that's the first round to Potter. Get ready. Jewel. And round two gets underway. Ah. Ah. Things are really hotting up now. Expelliarmus! Ah, oh, you beat me! Ah, oh, the shame of it! I'll never be able to hold my head up in polite society again! I suppose I'd better give you a famous witches and wizards card then. Here, have this one. I've got another like it anyway. Salazar Slytherin. Well, 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 Harry Potter, the first ever student to beat all the Founders dueling champions. I suppose you ought to be congratulated. Well done. Harry Potter, the boy who lived. Albus Dumbledore, headmaster of Hogwarts. Ignatia Wildsmith. The witch who invented flu powder. Felix Summerby, inventor of cheering charms. Greta Catchlove, author of Charm Your Own Cheese. Rowena Ravenclaw, Hogwarts co-founder, gave her name to a Hogwarts house. Jacinda Sykes, first person to fly across the Atlantic on a broomstick. Dorcas Wellbeloved, founder of the Society for Distressed Witches. Crispin Cronk. Sent to Azkaban for keeping sphinxes in his back garden. Yardley Platt, serial goblin killer. Edgar Struga, inventor of the sneaker scope. Helga Hufflepuff, Hogwarts co founder, gave her name to a Hogwarts house. Adalbert Waffling, famous magical theoretician. Chauncey Aldridge, first known victim of dragon pox. Cassandra Vablatsky. Celebrated seer and author of Unfogging the Future. Daisy Dodderidge, first landlady of the Leaky Cauldron. Bertie Bott, inventor of Bertie Bott's Every Flavour Beans. Salazar Slytherin, Hogwarts co-founder, gave his name to a Hogwarts house. Herpo the Fowl, first known creator of the Basilisk. Hengist of Woodcroft, founded the village of Hogsmeade. Paracelsus, greatest of all medieval alchemists. Gaspard Shingleton, celebrated inventor of the self-stirring cauldron. Montague Knightley, wizard chess champion, 1506 to 1588. Godric Gryffindor, Hogwarts co-founder, gave his name to a Hogwarts house. Potter. Ron Weasley. Hermione Granger. Draco Malfoy. Albus Dumbledore. Hagrid. 
Gilderoy Lockhart. Madam Hooch. Professor McGonagall. Professor Sprout. Professor Snape. Guy Trash. Hagrid's Hut. Basilisk. Chamber of Secrets. Herbology Greenhouse. Aragog's Pit Lair. An Imp. Filch. Moaning Myrtle. Nearly Headless Nick. Harry's Bedroom at Privet Drive. Ford Anglia. Gnome. Forks the Phoenix. A Fumos Bat Flamer. A Puffer Pod. Quidditch Player. Aragog's Lair. Tom Riddle. Troll Bridge, Forbidden Forest. Arthur Weasley's Automatic Washing Machine. Strange. Why is the door locked? I'd better find another way around.
are, sir. I I'm rather busy at the moment. Professor, I have some information for you. I think Moaning Myrtle was the girl who was killed by the monster 50 years ago. She may know where the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets is. Ah, uh, well, okay, if you're sure. Oh, it's you. What do you want? To ask you how you died. Oh, it was dreadful. It happened right in here. I died in this very bathroom. I remember it so well. I hidden in here because Olive Hornby was teasing me about my glasses. I hid in a cubicle and started crying. Then I heard a boy come in. He said something funny, a different language. Anyway, I unlocked the door to tell him and go and use his own bathroom. And then I died. How? No idea. I just remember seeing a pair of great big eyes and my whole body seized up and I was floating away. Where did you see the eyes? By the sinks. Look! The taps are turning into snakes! Try saying something in parcel tongue. Okay, I'll try. Open! Come to me. I'll go first. Well, it looks like you boys don't need me, so I'll be off. We'll be right behind you, Harry. Won't we, Professor? Oh dear. Lost it? Moi? No, 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 no. Not the great Gilderoy Lockhart. It's just that now is the time to end this little adventure. See? I shall go back to the school, tell them it was too late to save the girl, and that you both tragically lost your minds at the sight of her dead body. Oh, no. I know what he's going to do. He's going to try and hit us with one of his memory charms. Yes, indeed. The famous Lockhart memory charm. I'm sorry, boys, but it is for the best.
I'm bleeding. Ron, are you okay? Ron! Yes, I'm through here. I'm fine. Lockhart isn't, though. He got blasted by his own memory charm. What are we going to do now? Well, we can't get through this lot. It'll take ages. There's only one thing to do. You wait here and I'll go on. Ginny's been down here for hours, and if we waste any more time, it might be too late. OK, Harry. I'll start trying to shift some of this rock so you can get back through.
Wake up! She's alive, but only just. Ginny's been writing in the diary for months, pouring out her soul. And as she did, I grew stronger until I had enough power to start pouring a little of my soul back into her. Ginny Weasley opened the Chamber of Secrets. She daubed threatening messages on the walls and set the serpent of Slytherin on the mudbloods and filch's cat. I'm afraid Ginny told me all about you, Harry. So I decided to show you my famous capture of that great oaf, Hagrid, to gain your trust. One day, I hoped to lead another in my footsteps, to finish the work of Salazar Slytherin. I knew you were on the trail of Slytherin's heir, so I led Ginny down here to wait. Tom Riddle was my filthy, non-magical father's name. Do you see it yet, Harry? 
I am Lord Voldemort, and now, Harry, I am going to teach you a little lesson. Speak to me, Slytherin, greatest of the Hogwarts Four!
there was silence. Silence except for the steady drip, drip of ink still oozing from the diary. The basilisk venom had burned a sizzling hole right through it. Shaking all over, Harry pulled himself up. His head was spinning as though he'd travelled miles by flu powder. Ginny drew a great shuddering gasp. It was me, Harry, but I swear I didn't mean to. Riddle made me. He took me over. Harry told her that it was all right, that Riddle and the basilisk were finished. Come on, Ginny, let's get out of here. They were flying upwards, and before he'd stopped enjoying the ride, it was over. All three of them were hitting the wet floor of Moaning Myrtle's bathroom. Harry told them everything. He told them about hearing the disembodied voice, how Hermione had finally realized that he was hearing a basilisk in the pipes, how Aragog had told him where the last victim of the basilisk had died, how he had guessed that Moaning Myrtle had been the victim and that the entrance to the basilisk's lair, the Chamber of Secrets, might be in her bathroom. Professor Dumbledore explained that fifty years ago, Lord Voldemort, as a sixteen-year-old Tom Riddle, had enchanted his diary, and that diary had enchanted Ginny. Later, Harry managed to release Dobby from the slavery of Lucius Malfoy, for it was Lucius Malfoy who had planted Tom Riddle's diary on the hapless Ginny Weasley. And as for Harry, well, once again, he truly was the boy who lived. Finally, let's see who will win this year's House Cup. Ravenclaw. Hufflepuff. Slytherin. Gryffindor. Gryffindor are in the lead on house points. Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> 